So we're going to continue on. Um, I appreciate those of you that have hung into this point. I do recognize that everybody's busy, and if you have um, abandoned this two-hour process to this point, that's okay, I think. Uh, but I'll, I'll make the video available uh, at a later date. But we have some things to finish off with, and it's not much, but it is important. And that is part five, what we call the follow-up. Okay, so this is where I, I've given you a, a few examples of how Groundhog does the follow-up system. And uh, it's important information to know. So what we've done is uh, the different uh, types of follow-up for each particular situation. So the follow-up from the initial phone call. Uh, sorry, the follow-up, the, if, if the phone call is the next action that you want to take, um, what's it for? And let's just fill in a few blanks. So the phone call is in an effort to nudge the client to move quicker. So they fill out the web form, and yes, you might have an online booking system, you might have, uh, you know, they might download some case studies or whatever, but if they give you their phone number, and you, you call them right away, what you're doing is you're nudging the client to move a little bit quicker. Next is the demo. If you want people to uh, register for a demonstration, whether that's an online or whatever process that takes, um, that you have an online meeting scheduler leading to the offer. So if you get them into the meeting, and you do the demonstration, the outcome from that meeting should be to buy. The follow-up short-term nurture, or STN for short, short-term nurture is three to four emails over a seven-day period. So short-term nurture applies to people who have taken the free and now you want to move them towards Tripwire. So they're getting three to four emails over a seven-day period to make their first purchase. Uh, you also, in short-term nurture, need incentive. So in those three to four emails, you must build some type of incentive so that people can take the action on purchasing. And then finally, long-term nurture, if they get through this and they don't buy, lead them to long-term nurture, and that's five to 10 emails over a couple of months. While short-term emails, whoops, let's go down the page here. While short-term emails nudge them to a new sales appointment or purchase, or sorry, I need to change this word. This should say long, long, uh, long-term long, nurture email. So not, oh no, that's right. Sorry. My point is short meaning, and I apologize for that. Where's my brain when I put these things together? Short meaning the email is short. And I mean short, like one line, two lines, or maximum three lines. People make the mistake with long-term nurture campaigns and they send out these big, long sort of case studies and whatever, um, I find that's very ineffective. So I just built a short-term nurture campaign for um, uh, a database company, and basically the email says this. It's like, I've been trying to connect with you for a couple of days now. Here's my phone number. Call me back. <laughs> it's like, to me, that's a long-term nurture email. And you don't really need a lot of information. I find that the more brief you are in your emails to nudge them towards a sales purchase, so nudge towards a sale or purchase, that's what works best. And also in long-term nurture, make sure that you include some type of incentive and specials and deal days. Okay, deal days being like Black Friday, Cyber Monday, Christmas, New Year's, whatever. Okay, so long-term nurture, five to ten emails over a couple of months. 
short emails to nudge them to a new sales appointment or purchase. So get them to make an appointment where you're going to sell them or direct purchase. And then finally, specials and deals in your long-term nurture. 